Okay, yeah, so yeah, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, hope you're all doing well. I see a lot of familiar faces. Um, but um, just quick little introduction to those that are familiar with Caravanserai Project or kind of the work we do, but my name is Bradley Chargloff. I'm the program manager here at Caravanserai Project. Um, and we're a 501c3 that really assists mission-driven organizations in at all steps of, of really their, their journey, right? Um, for profits and nonprofits alike. Um, we do this through technical assistance and kind of our capacity building services. And this webinar is part of kind of those services that we provide. Um, this monthly webinar series covers a variety of topics from digital strategies, board development, financial planning, you know, so on, so on. Today's, you know, obviously is about burnout. Uh, we also have our other programs, such as our pre-accelerator, that's for early stage social entrepreneurs, and that's called Seed Lab, and we do that in partnership with the University of California Riverside Extension. We also have our strategic networking and planning circles, um, along with kind of our breakthroughs masterclasses that cover topics such as organizational survival and sustainability and organizational impact. Um, but yeah, really, thank you for joining us this Friday for a webinar on burnout, right, and how we can manage it to really accelerate, you know, our organizations, our small businesses, and, you know, more importantly, even our own personal goals as well. Um, and often those are, often they're really tied together, but you know, we thought this was a timely conversation with the incredible boom of new small businesses, organizations, entrepreneurs. Um, so I'd really just like to take the time to um, welcome our guest speaker today, who is Kevin Hunting. He's the founder of Kinder and Two Steps Forward Coaching, and he will lead our conversation today. And it, sh uh, it should be a very collaborative discussion. So um, use the chat. Uh, feel free to have your mics on, cameras on. But without further ado, Kevin, the floor is yours. All right. Thank you. Can everyone see my title slide? Yes. All right. All yes. right. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Brad. Really, I am so excited to be here with all of you today. Whoops. A little too excited there. Um, my name is Kevin Hunting. I am the founder of Two Steps Forward Coaching. I also launched a program called Leading Kinder. Um, kindness is sort of makes is the essence of what I believe is at, at the core of everything that we do. Um, I also think that we live in a world where we have so many external and internal things that are happening that sometimes we forget to even be kind to ourselves. And that's where it really all starts. Um, I am a leadership coach and I, I do partner mostly with mission driven organizations like yours. And it's really to help you unlock your potential so that you can lead with greater ease, confidence, and impact. And we're gonna talk a lot about what that looks like in relationship to burnout. Um, prior to launching my actually coaching practice, which I am, I am so close to this, this topic, I actually launched my practice during COVID, just kind of pre-COVID. So I am a solo entrepreneur. Um, and I can totally relate to a lot of the, the different topics, obviously, that we're going to be going through together as a group. Um, prior to this, I worked in corporate marketing in both CRM and e-commerce for Fortune 500 brands like Old Navy, Banana Republic, and GE. I also have done some great consulting work with a Latin American development bank in Washington. Um, my spouse is a Mexican national, so viva. Um, I am very much, I love Mexico. I've had the opportunity to live in Mexico City and work internationally as well. And again, I think the work that we are doing today and the focus here is just so important. Um, I think a lot of us sometimes don't even realize the ways in which certain influencers are affecting us because we're just always on the go. We're always thinking about what's next and what we need to do. So a few ground rules, um, you know, mute, mute yourself. Of course, if you wanna come forward when there's a chance, you can unmute. And again, you could disable video or be on video, whichever you feel more comfortable. 
And as we move into the exercise, there will be a, a really kind of strong exercise portion of this that I really, really would say step into. Um, this is actually going to be set up to hopefully benefit you and make a difference in your day-to-day -day life. So the more that you lean in and the more that you can put into this, the more you're going to get out. And then lastly, I truly believe, again, that all experiences are opportunities for growth. And so that's, that means growth in both ways, meaning you're helping me learn as perhaps I might be teaching, um, but there's this great interchange that's always happening. And so I really welcome you to come forward and to share and participate as much as you as you would like. Um, so let's, let's get started. Um, also, one other thing, please, I know these things right here are, oh, you can't really see it, sorry. It's a phone, it is a mobile phone. These, we love to get distracted by mobile phones. Um, they just keep calling our name. Please put your phone down and I'd love you know, for you to be fully present with us because then you're gonna, get, you're gonna get so much more out of this. So let's, let's get into the, the nuts and bolts. First, drop it in the chat. What interested you about this webinar and topic? Um, you can either, if you'd like to come up video and share, what interested you, that's great. Or you can drop it in the chat, but I'm curious, what drew you to this topic today? Okay, I don't see the chat lighting up. Burnout is real. Awesome current experience and sharing with my team, Jennifer. Change management has been hard. That's a great, great observation in line there. Tax season. <laughs> I, that one was good. Um, that, that can be a little stressful too, tax season. All right. I mean, what I'm taking from that is this topic is real for so many of you here. Um, and that's why you're here is that it's, it is pervasive. And the more, there's more and more research obviously that's coming out about this. They're during but both pre-COVID and after COVID, um, we've seen dramatic increases. And so it is a hot topic. And so let's talk about, let's start with you first. Um, hold on one sec. If you're all here, right, you are all leaders within your organizations. Um, many of you are, again, sm might be small businesses. I know there are for-profits as well as nonprofits that are represented. And the demands on each and every one of us, right, just doesn't stop. Um, so you might be thinking about, I'm sure some of the things that take up your time and your energy are things like capital, right? Finding capital and funding for growth. That's a huge, huge thing. I know that's, that's happening day to day. Or healthcare. Healthcare, not only for yourself, but perhaps your employees and benefits. Um, many of you obviously are trying to increase your brand awareness and, and the marketing side of your business. And so, or hiring talented and diverse people is a focus as well. Scaling, um, someone talked about change management. Scaling is something that is not easy to do. And when you layer on like this idea of burnout, obviously it becomes so much more complicated and we're gonna get into what makes it so complicated. But suffice to say, all of us and all of you are probably being hit from so many different directions and having to wear so many different hats in your day-to-day -day and trying to manage not only yourself, but the team that's around you as well as the organization that you're a part of. So, um, and it doesn't stop here. This is just one piece of the puzzle. We are all also experiencing so many different levels of uncertainty, unlike anything I think we've experienced in the past, right? Uncertainty is a close relative of basically anxiety. And so whether it be climate change, social equality and social causes, um, inflation, which we've been dealing with as a country, um, our, our politics, our political system, and even what's happening right now globally in Ukraine, right? All of these external factors influence us 
And sometimes we're just, I don't think we give credit to how much they may be influencing us on top of what we have to worry about just in our day-to-day -day about our jobs, et cetera. Um, also included in this are families, like we have our familial relationships as well. So there's, there is a mountain of, of things that are affecting us both mentally, physically, and emotionally. And it can feel heavy. It can feel really, really heavy at times. Um, I'd love to hear anyone in the chat, you know, who here has felt this heaviness? If, you, if you'd like to come forward and share, um, I would really love it. Um, again, if you wanna drop it in the chat, but who here has felt just at times this sense of heaviness? Anyone wanna come forward and maybe share? Emily, thank you. It, it's felt endless the last few years. Anyone wanna come forward and just share like maybe what, what has felt heavy to you or how you've experienced it? Uh, yes, hello. Hello. Hi, Kevin, hi. Hey, Christine. Um, this is this is so needed because I swear I feel like Mr. and Mrs. Burn, you know, burnout have have come to have dinner. They've come to live with me. And as bad as I want to kick them out, they're still hanging around, you know. And uh, I, I think I feel like this because, you know, this was a situation where I wasn't looking to do this. Mm. You know, I kind of was forced into doing this and because of my, you know, because of health reasons. And uh, when they retired me off the job, you know, from the illness that I had had, it was like, okay, what do I do? And so, you know, I, you know, I started just doing this nonprofit and it's one of those things I feel like, you know, God is leading me, but it's like my plate, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, you know? And so it's exhausting. And I, I, I feel like I am in a pool of water and someone's holding me down. Mm. And I'm, I, I'm like doggy paddling, right? To just- to Yeah, just you're kind of like tre treading water, right? This idea right, I'm of just- treading water, right, exactly, exactly. So um, this is so important. I mean, it's so easily, um, to be burnt out and you, you want to keep going, but sometimes you're just like, I can't do this. I can't do this. But then you'll get the second win or you'll get a little rest and it, you know, you're still, you're still going after all. So, yeah. No, thank so you so it. much for, for sharing that Christine. Cause I'm, I'm, you know, I'm seeing a lot of heads nod. And I think that that is what a lot of people have been, been experiencing. And I like how what I also hear you were saying is it's sort of, it, there's like an ebb and flow sometimes to this too, right? Like it can be constant, but there are moments, right? Where maybe you mentioned getting some sleep, right? That physical side of, of just getting, you know, that, that seven to maybe nine hours of sleep, which is what we are supposed to, right? At least that, that's what medicines tells us is, is what we should be getting yeah. on average each night to maintain our, our healthy state of being. But it is, it's a, it's a struggle. It's a, this back and forth and, and this imagery that you used of treading water, I think is really yeah. powerful um, in terms of. And, and you know, it's, it's interesting because every time you have that feeling like, I can't do this, I can't do this. There's always somebody that will come in your path, like where, wow, I really appreciate that you really made a difference or can I get more? And then that, you know, so then you get that little edge to, to keep going again. <laughs> nice. So, well, we're going to thank you again for sharing and just being so candid about your experience. Um, we are going to get into hopefully, you know, you maybe identifying some ways in which you can create at least a little bit more space, right, of not experiencing this, or what would that look like if you could reduce that? So we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll save that, but thank you for coming forward. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, the stats are startling. Like, so when I talk about heavy, right, it is, the, the stats are pretty telling. This was from a recent survey about, on small businesses, and again, three of the key areas that are so, that 
obviously a result of all this is that it is. Burnout is very prevalent. 42% of small business owners have reported recently experiencing burnout. I would probably argue that these, these um, numbers are actually a bit low, but it certainly shows how prevalent it is. I think another really prominent per, uh, stat on this page is the one in the middle here that minority business owners are being disproportionately affected um, by the need, you know, by this in general. And there are a lot of factors for that, but that's certainly telling as well. And then again, there's the mental health side of this. I know that that is all of us have been hearing more and more in the news in publications about how mental health is really becoming uh, not a pandemic, but so many people are experiencing more mental health related issues. And again, we are not immune as business owners. Um, running a business during the pande pandemic has had a negative impact on our mental well being. So, again, the numbers really do show that this is so prevalent. Um, and I think where, again, the rubber meets the road is what we're going to talk about what can we do? Like, what really can we do? But before we get there, what I want to talk about, and again, this is meant to be interactive, so don't be shy. Um, the more love to hear your experience because that's what this is all about is when you think about all that heaviness, what you've been experiencing, what impact do you believe it has on your individual performance? Anyone want to come forward and just or throw out some ideas that of the ways in which you've seen it impact your performance? You can put it in the chat or come forward, either or. I'll say something. I um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, thanks, Annie. Um, you know, uh, in the nonprofit world, you know, every year you kind of have to reinvent yourself, right? You know, it, it often, often in in the kind that I run, we have to. You have a good year, then you you start all over with a new year, and with dealing with all of that, and the the impact it's had on me because I'm the one kind of responsible for making sure that uh, revenues are up and all that stuff. Um, what's been hard is um, trying to st stay up, right? That's what we're doing, why we're a lot of that burnout because you don't just get to often feel or express how you feel. And when you do, you often don't know the ramifications of how it's affecting your team. And I'm always that open door, tell me how you feel. But then when you, as someone leading, we don't, we're not always given that same privilege to do mm. so. We don't, we, we might not always realize, but we are leading and that. And, and so when I've, you know, let my guard down or just expressed my, my fears or frustrations or such, I do see that it does impact. So I'm having to internalize more um, you know, and I've learned that over, over the COVID experience, you know, where our revenues were down almost 80%, participation wow. 85%, back up to 63%, but um, it's still not com comfortable. So that's what I've learned that I've had to internalize to keep everybody motivated and up. Um, so that, that adds to the burnout because you don't get to be, you know, you're, when you hold it in, that's never good, you know, so you got to find that uh, avenue to release right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think you make a really a great point and funny. Um, it's a great lead in because you talked about emotions. And, and that's, it's not really, it's not as taboo of a topic, especially that work dynamics are changing and more and more organizations, especially larger ones, less small because of budget, you talk about budget, this idea of right, looking at the whole being of a person. Um, there's more and more emphasis now about that integration of people understanding that really our emotions can be one of the most powerful tool that we can use as a leader. Um, and many of you might, you know, that might feel a little strange to me, to some of you, and that's okay. That, you know, that, well, you know, emotions, some people think that emotions may not be, there's no place for that or, um, but, but I'm telling you, and we'll get, I'm going to share some more about what that looks like when we talk about emotions. You made such a, a solid point, Andy, that 
it doesn't really do us. It is one of the un most unhealthiest things to keep it in, to not deal with those emotions because that's energy that you're experiencing and that you're feeling. And that energy has to go somewhere, um, mm -hmm. right? When you think about someone who's angry, you know, energetically how they show up. You can you can feel the anger. You can sense the anger. And sometimes if people show it, you know, a bit physically, right? People might throw something or toss something down. That, that all, we're, we're exchanging that, all of us, day in and day out. And we don't even recognize it sometimes, but that, that exchange is happening. Um, and so we're going to talk a lot about that. And thank you, everyone, who I saw that the chat was lighting up as well in terms of all the ways. Just Some people were talking about it's distracting. Um, you're not as present. I think that is a huge one, Jennifer. So when you think about as a leader, right, not being present or how much of your time where you're not being fully present either with yourself and the work that you need to do or your team, what, what impact that does have a real material impact on your organization. We, we, it's hard to quantify at times and that's why there's, you know, some people I think shy away from it, but it does have an impact. Um, and there's more and more research that's getting, that's around this, that actually does demonstrate what that impact is. Um, and, and so thanks again, everyone for, for participating. And so I want to talk about really like how it does there. What happens with our performance is that it really doesn't allow us to reach our potential. We all have potential every day, every day we can wake up and there's potential just waiting for us to step into. And if we're experiencing really high levels of fatigue, maybe exhaustion, which are those signs of burnout, you are not, your, your potential, you're leaving potential sort of on the, on the table. That's a way to think about it. It's sort of like this exchange that happens because you can't, you're not, you can't show up and be fully present. And so, automatic voice message system. Um, yeah, please mute yourself. Um, but thank you for that voice message. So you're right. Two of the biggest, two of the biggest factors that determine how we actually will show up in our performance is a the amount of stress, anxiety, worry, tension that we are experiencing, coupled with the degree of engagement or buy-in that we have in response to whatever the situation is that we are finding ourselves. So those two, if you just think about those two factors as an equation, those two factors really have a huge impact on our performance. And again, this is about us kind of scratching the surface and building that awareness. And, and I can see that so many of you are really like close to this be just because of what you've already shared in the chat. Um, so just quickly, thank you again for participating. Here are those ways in which it can show up um, in these three different bucket areas. So again, burnout can show up mentally for us in terms of, you know, it's, it makes it difficult to focus or it diminishes, it can diminish our creativity. When you are under certain levels of extreme stress and worry and anxiety, it is not physically like meaning physics, energy speaking to like we're energetic beings, you cannot be creative, you cannot see opportunities because you are being sort of absorbed by that stress or anxiety. We, um, a lot of times leaders, you may have a harder time accessing in your intuition, which is a huge benefit um, to tap into as a leader. And the emotional side is also huge, right? And we, you, we've talked about this, this became a major Point just even on the previous slide that it creates that anger sometimes, frustration, worry, resignation, maybe um, blame, anxiety, and our emotions um, are so powerful. We we don't we really sometimes diminish the power of our of our emotions. And then physically, certainly, I think many of you um, have experienced this. Right? It it can create it'll show up physically in our body. So as a, headaches, fatigue, exhaustion, insomnia. These are all ways in which burnout can affect this if we don't get in front of it. Um, and so 
I want to talk a little bit more about this, this emotional piece, because while all of these are really important and they, all of them affect us, they can all affect us when it comes to burnout. It, the emotional aspect of who we are has the greatest opportunity to help us address burnout. And, but yet it is also the most challenging to address. And, and we covered some of this. Why? Because we rarely talk about our emotions. A lot, some people aren't even comfortable, right? Talking about what they're feeling. Um, and it can be uncomfortable at times to talk about what you're actually feeling, but we, we tend to sometimes I think live and react and be at the effect of our emotions and forget their purpose. And we're going to talk a lot about really as a, I, I use this a lot with my clients, our emotions can come are our key performance indicators. That's what I refer to them as, um, emotions can really play such a critical role in either helping us to propel us and move forward, or they can, they can really hold us back. Um, and that's as leaders, we really wanna to try to optimize that propelling us forward piece of the equation because we know it's gonna positively impact not only ourselves, but our organizations. Um, the other piece is that I talked about research. Many of you may have seen this, but emotional intelligence actually does have an impact on our levels of success. 90% of top performers score high on EEQ or emotional intelligence. Um, there have been several studies that show that people with EQs, higher overall EQs can earn on average more than almost close to $30,000 more annually than those who score low on EQ. And I think this one was really interesting as well. A 40-year study of you know, doctorates or PhDs found that EQ was 400% more powerful than IQ when predicting who would have success. So there are real tangible benefits to building, again, greater emotional awareness and intelligence. And there's just more and more research um, I know that there's another research, a case study that, I mean, if any of you are interested, I can share that after the fact that shows that if you're able to increase certain areas under this EQ umbrella, there are benefits that range from not only financial success, which is really outlined on the slide in that first bullet point, but not only that, but your leadership ability and overall employee engagement, your feelings of personal freedom, um, time management, productivity. It, it really is all encompassing. So I, I think it's so important to address it. Um, and now, after sharing some of those, those impacts, right, to us both mentally, emotionally, and physically, I'd love, again, to, to get some participation going here in terms of how many of you or who, which of you can identify with any of these kind of micro, what are called micro or avoidance um, clues as it relates to burnout. If you'd love to come forward and share, I'd appreciate it. Um, or again, light up the chat. But any of you, have you experienced like, like that feeling? I think there's actually many of you said, I have no control. This feeling of like, I just have no control. Or um, I feel more resentful towards specific maybe people in my life. Um, and another big one, which again, kind of relates back to the emotional side is, I really believe that my boss or manager doesn't treat me, treats me unfairly. So those are the softer side of this too, where it's all affecting us. Does anyone want to come forward and maybe share? I think um, something that, you know, a lot of these are like, check, 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 check. But I think what that I, I struggle because it, um, it's, it trickling into my personal life so the ones that I become frustrated with are the people I love the most you know the ones mm -hmm. that I have at home and so then there's that guilt of you know I want to appreciate you but you're frustrating me because I'm trying to get something done and I'm having my own obstacles right because I'm tired the lack of focus and you know and they don't understand right as children um, specifically 
I can't, you know, that they just want me. And so then I become resentful because I'm like, you're pulling from me, right? Like, and I am their mother, but I'm like, you're pulling from me and you're pulling from me and there's not much more to give. And I, I need you to turn it off and they, you know, they don't understand. So then I become resentful toward them. And so it's definitely something that I've struggled with. And then you go to bed with that guilt, right? That you didn't enjoy a moment with them, that the whole day, I'm just wanting them to like, please take a nap, go to sleep, turn off, you know? And then when they do turn off, then it's like, oh, you're so lovely. And I feel so terrible for, you know, not having enjoyed the day with them. Wow. Thank you for sharing that about I think, you know, again, what you're sharing is this idea that you recognize that it's happening, right? You are aware of it, which is, which is half, probably half the battle with all of this. But then like you almost, I'm hearing too, that you're judging yourself in the process too, right? That sometimes you're like, I feel guilty because I do need that space, or I really, I just need a little bit of space. And that Right. In what ways is that judgment and that self judgment that you're having, even after the fact, even putting more right stress on yourself? Um, so I really appreciate you sharing that because it really illustrated beautifully how all of this kind of weighs on itself and can build on itself if it's not if it, if it's not addressed um, and in healthy ways. So anybody else want to? kind of share about any of the these micro avoidance uh, clues or anything that you've experienced maybe in your professional life or well so something that ironically just happened to me is I have an employee here working with me and I started reading this and I called them over and I said hey do you identify with a lot of this and I'm honestly now thinking my employee might have worse burnout than me oh wow and are, thank you for sharing that. And, and I think that's in what ways could this open up some communication, right? Or talking just openly about it in the workplace, right? Have a huge thing that can make a, a, a it seems small, but can make a huge difference is just sort of acknowledging, it, right? Just, just allowing someone to be seen and heard. So thank you for sharing that, that, you know, your fellow coworker or someone that's, that you might be experiencing this more than, than perhaps you. Um, and perhaps the big question, right, is what's your role in relationship to her now that you're going to be receiving this information that might be beneficial, um, in terms of helping. So we're going to, any other, any questions up till now, any questions, any thoughts, anything either in the chat or you can come forward as well. Okay, going once. All right, we are now gonna really dive in and start getting into more of what I'm calling like the, the true work, work part of this, which is, so now we know all this, we've talked about the impact, right, that it has in terms of just what the research and science says and the stats and how burnout can affect us and what it might look like both at the mental, emotional, and physical level. Um, we've also identified a lot of what they're called these micro clues that would be indicators to us that we might be experiencing it because a lot of times it may not be, we may not be fully aware that we're like, wow, I think I am experiencing it and that's okay. Um, so this is, now that we have all of this information, the bigger question, right, is, well, so now what, what can we do? Um, and this, I'm going to tell you, it's not easy. Um, it, it really is going to take, as we go through these exercises together, this is the, the part where every, in order to make that change or in order to have that improvement in your life, it's going to require something that needs to be implemented or action that needs to be taken. And a lot of times that can be challenging. So I just want to put that out there that um, this isn't going to be easy, but it's also going to be really fun and, I, and I hopefully very beneficial. I know it's going to be beneficial to you. So let's talk about this piece about what we can do. And one of the big ideas here, which we've, we've sort of talked about a little bit is that we're all leaders, right? And I think some of us, the big question is, the first question to start with is, what are you doing to lead yourself first? It kind of emanates outward, right? In terms of 
starting with myself and knowing that I'm interacting with people, which might be that next circle outside of yourself. And then the broader circle might be everybody else, including, you know, family members, et cetera. So it's this big question is, we are all leaders. And I know many people think of leaders as being business owners, only business owners, or C-suite type individuals or executive directors um, and perhaps managers. But we, every single individual is a leader. Doesn't matter if you're a parent, a therapist, um, maybe a, a consultant or a mentor, um, the way, if you are interacting with people on a regular basis, you are a leader. And leading is really the way to help move people, including ourselves into action. The question really is not whether or not we are leaders, but how will we lead? That's, that's the bigger question. Um, and again, the key here is to build greater awareness about ourselves and the things affecting us as a leader. Okay. And this includes both that emotional, mental, and physical influencers. So I sit, just sit for a minute and, and think of the, the quote at the bottom of here, the line that either, right, everyone is a leader either by choice or default. And just the distinction between the words choice and default, hopefully you're taking that away that um, default sounds very powerless and choice embodies this idea of being empowering, this, this, that you can be empowered at a very individual level. All right, so we're gonna start. I want you guys to really, again, get involved, take the time. Um, we're gonna spend a couple of minutes on each exercise. And then after the first kind of exercise, we'll break and have time for discussion and collaboration. And when we, before we get started on this particular exercise, I want you to just make sure that we lay some framework down, which is we really, as individuals, want to be focused on the things that not only matter to us, but also the things that we can control. So playing within that space, as you, can, as you go through the exercise, please be thinking about that space and the intersection of those two things, that things that are important to you, but also things that you can control, because we, I mean, I, I do it all the time and I'm sure many of you do, right? We, sometimes we love to think about what, how we could change the things that we really can't control. And we actually give a lot of those, give a lot, that, a lot of thoughts and, and sometimes feelings and emotions, but it won't really serve us in terms of that idea of, of being at choice as a leader because we really can't control, we can only control ourselves. So let's, that's just a framework that I wanna put out there in terms of laying laying it down before we start. And the first question, again, if you wanna have, if you have a piece of paper, your computer, whatever you wanna use, um, let's start here by asking this question and rating, kind of rating yourself. On a scale of one to 10, with 10 being completely satisfied and one being not satisfied at all, how satisfied are you with your level of performance in the last six months. And I've included to the right, just some key kind of leadership qualities and traits and characteristics. This is not every single one, but it certainly is a lot of the primary um, traits associated with leadership. So if you wanna use those as your guide and be thinking about those as it relates to how you rate yourself, put it in the chat. Um, I'd love to see how do you rate your overall level of satisfaction with your performance? Be honest. Hello? <laughs> okay, four to five. Lena, thank you. Annie, six to seven. Nora, six. Okay, seven to eight. Julenia, Sione, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, so apologize. Five, Courtney, six. Lots of, I'm seeing a lot of like five, maybe five, six, and seven, kind of in that range between five and seven. There are some seven and eights.
<laughs> three are big. The top three, I love your honesty. Thank you, Sarah Green, for saying that the first three were a zero. Um, which that is useful information. So that was brilliant that you keep that handy. Like that's really solid information um, because I, I'd love to ask you as you're doing this to think about if you said that if where you rank yourself low, if you, if you if you actually broke it down by each of these areas, obviously the lower you've rated it, be thinking about what impact that's having on your ability to lead as well. Just anybody want to come forward and just share like you know what this exercise felt like or any any thoughts about how you rated yourself or maybe why you rated yourself that the number that you gave yourself? Well, I can just elaborate on mine really quick. The top three are things that are more internal. The bottom five are things that are external. I'm really good on putting on a facade and making the world think I'm okay. But then when it comes to taking care of me, it breaks down. Gotcha. Oh, wow. Okay. Remember that, That's, that was huge. Anybody else want to come forward and just share anything yeah, that's yeah, coming I, up for you? This is Gail Herring, and I don't want to say anything except to say that what the lady whose name I can't remember just spoke and just said was just so real mm. and so on point. We do give the world the impression that we're okay. And I think that makes it even worse because then there's guilt associated with not being true, not only to them, but more importantly to ourselves. And to have to have the bravery to admit that, I think, um, I appreciate that from, from the previous speaker. So thank you for saying that, because that's really real. Thank you for, for saying that as well and, and for like for keeping it real, because really that that's the only that is part of the, the this exercise is right. It is. It, let's Let's get real with ourselves about where we're at. There's no judgment. It doesn't, it doesn't make it right or wrong or good or bad or anything, unless many of us may be doing that to ourselves. We may be actually judging ourselves, but that's where the two go hand in hand and that um, just getting real and honest about where we're at right now is hugely beneficial in understanding then where do I want to go? And so that's the only way. Um, so I really do appreciate everyone's honesty. Anybody else? I know um, Zuliam, Zulia, Zul, I'm not Zulau Yam, Yama. Sorry, I may not be saying your name correctly. I know that you put in the chat that you could you could also identify with Sarah, um, and that you said that your health is for sure a zero. Um, your health and wellness, and that. A lot of times is those things are the things that tend to sometimes get put on the put put on the back burner first. It's kind of like, oh, my health and wellness, like I can let that go. Um, but it's such a, a huge piece of this puzzle. Anybody else want to share just your thoughts? I wanted to piggyback off of um, how we the world perceives us as something than what we're going through internally. I think more so than a facade, I think it's um, also uh, the way I see it is that we have a responsibility to others that we prioritize. So then all these things that we feel are about us, we put on the side. So our health, what we eat, where we taking breaks, all that, it gets put aside because we have a sense of responsibility um, to others, right? So we put them first. And, and so not necessarily that I that we're faking it it's that they come first right so we want and and if you're in a leadership position you don't want to tell them um i'm sacrificing these things to make sure we get this done for, you know, for the overall you know community benefit because what kind of leader are you right so you you internalize these things and then you put yourself in the back burner and and you put this you know, I, I, you know, this, everything is okay out here, but we're worrying about this. This is personal. So I'm taking it. Um, and we don't recognize how it's leading into where I, the work that we're putting out. We're self like, not to me, like 
a victim here, but you know, we, those things that have to do with me, I put on the side and I'm not going to deal with them because I'll handle that on my personal time, which seems to shrink, 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 shrink. Which ultimately, you know, so, so beautifully said, right. And then how does that affect you? Right. Cause you, you talked about, you don't take, you're the same person you leave and you go home to be with your family. And you did speak about that. Right. And everyone here does that, whether you're going to your spouse, your partner, if you have children, um, it could be, even if you're by yourself, it could be through your friends, you are taking all of that with you and are showing up a certain way when you, right, like tend to prioritize, almost prioritize yourself last because you're like, wow, I need to take care of everyone. I'm, I need to serve everybody else first. And then where does that leave me, right? Where am I in this equation? And that is a tough, it is, it's a tough, it's a tough balance at times. Um, anybody else wanna just share? Um, I, this, I don't know if this fits here and I don't know if it's gonna come up later, um, but it's, it's greatly impacting all of those, all of these um, that, that you have listed is what I, what's impacting me is my, um, I express it, um, judgment mm. am i did i do enough during covid did i are you know and assume and i'm assuming and not good to do you know that i am being judged that i didn't do enough or could have done more or and that seems to be on my shoulders which is affecting everything else i'm doing you know um am i inspiring still you know all those even my time management is greatly i'm just i'm tired so I don't know if that fits here or not, but that is the weight on my shoulders. And then I can speak from an, another point of view and sit tall and say, I saved the organization. But uh, the perception of what other people think um, seems to be weighing on me and affecting all those, my ability to inspire, I think, uh, my product productivity, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't know if that makes any sense. It makes perfect sense. And thank you for, for stating that. I do, th because what you, what I'm hearing you say, and again, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Annie, was this idea that it's the perception that you have, and we all have these, right? We have perceptions of what we think other people may think of us or how they may be viewing us. Um, all of us, if you're a part of nonprofits, you guys have, you know, there's board members that are associated typically with your nonprofits. And all of those individuals, right? Sometimes you're wondering like, what, per what are they thinking? And, and I think that piece, Annie, that you get into is how our thoughts sometimes, right? We may tell ourselves certain things where we may not have any evidence to support that, whatever that judgment, sometimes those judgment type things that we're telling ourselves about what other people might be thinking which gets into that self-judgment piece, which kind of is that judgment component. And that is, that can take you to a, a, that path of burnout. If you keep doing that, mm -hmm. right? And you keep, and that's, you're going almost like a level deeper, which I like Annie, but there is a relationship between your thoughts and your emotions. Um, and, and those two work very much hand in hand in terms of our overall states of being and how we're being. It is, it is proven science um, that our thoughts and emotions are interrelated because typically what we think is creating the feeling that we're experiencing. And it's what we're telling ourselves a lot of time that results in that emotion. So it is, that's another whole kind of, we could certainly cover that off in another presentation, but I love how you're making that connection and that you're talking about this idea of judgment because many people don't talk about the judgment, right? That's, that's a place of vulnerability to feel, right? That I'm being judged or even that I'm judging myself. And we, we all do it. Everyone, there are, there we're human. It is a part of the human experience. Anybody else before we move on into sort of the next, let's say the first build on this, um, this question that I just asked. Anybody else want to share any thoughts? I just had a, this Jack, I had an observation that, you know, we're not going through all of this in a vacuum and we're not the only ones that are experiencing this. 
Um, and so, you know, the challenge for me in influencing and inspiring others or in, you know, solving problems that arise in the workplace or elsewhere is struggling is how I let people know that we're all going through this together and we're all dealing with these issues together and many people aren't even aware of it. And I, I had a conversation with a friend. He said, so many employers now are reopening and they're not even paying attention to this. So what are they going to, what's going to happen in the workplace when you have 15, 20 people that are all experiencing this level of stress and burnout? And how do you communicate with each other and work with each other? It, that in that's the urgency really it is you thank you um that is the urgency is that it is sort of the uh, it's the elephant in the room and that i love how you you normalized it too that you talked about how for you it, it is the struggle piece of it is you being able to relate to everybody else because everybody else is typically experiencing this in well as well in some way shape or form right and their unique kind of um experience but Certainly, I, I just to give you a little bit of a glimmer of hope. But these are again bigger organizations. Um, they're not such, they're not really small businesses. I had the opportunity to go to a summit this past weekend, and there are organizations who are really trying. Really, they're putting because a lot a lot of times organizations like to say they're doing something right, but then they don't really do it. They don't walk the talk. They just kind of use it as a marketing sort of PR exercise. Um, but there are organizations like Deloitte who have now what are called like corporate well-being officers. And so we, you, there is, you can see, there is a transformation happening, which is really be a beautiful thing that is starting to understand that what, what, how we used to view employees and how we used to view anyone in our organization was a really sort of narrow view that didn't take into account that we're, we are such complex, holistic, you know, um, whole beings that we have, we're very multifaceted. And so you're, you're seeing more and more organizations like Deloitte, actually DHL was another big organization that spoke that is really making this a focus. And because of the, all the reasons that you've outlined, um, Jack, because they already understand how the impact that this will ultimately have on their quote bottom line, since they are very much for-profit organizations, but they've already, they're trying to get ahead of it. And I, and it's, it's not easy. This work is not easy. I will say that it's a lot of trying things on. It's a lot of, you know, doing what you think is best, trying something, learning, and then, you know, making slight tweaks or changes. So it's, there isn't sort of the, I, I don't want to say like, right, the gold nugget or that one thing. But us just having a discussion today about this is, is really a, a huge space, you know, for everyone to be able to come forward and start to understand what does this mean to me? And what, in what ways do I want to make this mean about my organization? If you really, if you really start to embrace it and understand it for you, yourself and your organization. So thank you. Um, all right, we're gonna move forward to this next big question. So if you have a piece of paper, I'm gonna give it like a minute. Um, I have a, what? Just write down, you can think, don't overthink it. What are the items, the things, maybe even people it could be that are currently creating that tension, fatigue and overwhelm in your professional life? I'll give it about, again, like a minute. And if you, after, if you write your list, if you want to drop that in the chat as well, that would be great. Again, what are the items, things, and people 
that are currently creating tension, fatigue, and overwhelm in your professional life. And while people are still completing this, if you, if you did complete it or you may be finished, if you'd like to just come forward and share, we'll take about one or two people. Um, you know, what are those things that if you really are getting honest with yourself are creating that fatigue, overwhelm, exhaustion in your professional life? I know I've seen like multitasking a lot around productivity um, in the chat, but anyone just wanna come forward and share maybe what other things might be affecting or creating that for you. Relationship, a lack of board knowledge. Christine, thank you for sharing that. Just like learning, but like, um, not having support staff, Rebecca, and yet having the capacity and not yet having the capacity to hire, okay? So there's a limitation there as well. All right, problem employees, team morale, scope of work, that's huge. Constant grinding and overwhelm. Thank you, Jennifer, for sharing. Anyone wanna come forward and just talk about that? Like what, you know, what are those things? constant calls from staff. Okay. So here's, here's the thing we're going to, this builds on itself. So to keep this list handy or next to you, because we're now going to ask another critical question, which is now I want you to tie these things back to in what ways, what are the ways that they're affecting you mentally, emotionally, and physically? The more detailed, the better, that you can actually name it for yourself in terms of the list or the items that you identified. How are they affecting you mentally, emotionally, and physically? And it could be more than one. So I am having a great deal of frustration with coworkers as well as companies I work with because there seems to be this lack of. I'm going to use the word due diligence on their part to, to get work done. It's like having to drag people along the process path. It's like, oh, you're taking PTO. I get that. So who's your backup? Wait, you have no backup. Then what do I do? So my frustration level just continues to lift and lift and lift. And I need to figure out where do I where do I lay off that frustration? Well, for those of us who are empty nesters, the only person who gets that frustration usually is my wife, uh, which she then looks at me and says, stop being an idiot, uh, which sometimes works. Okay, Brett, thank you for, for being honest about, you know, like, again, what's happening, the experience like that you're having, Actually, I'd love to speak with you. There's, a, there's, I can't go into it right now, but there's this idea called agreements that might be beneficial to you that I certainly can share with you after this that might help in this area. Like it's very specific to what you're talking about. Um, so we'll, we'll talk, we can talk about that. But thank you again for sharing that. Just the idea of, like you said, like someone's not there, someone's out on, on vacation, but there's no one that's actually backing that person up in terms of getting the information that maybe you need or the answer. I, I've developed a solution. Okay. I have an escalation path. And my favorite thing to do is to reach up all the way to the VP and president of companies <laughs> <laughs> and letting them know you guys are falling down. Because more often than not, leadership does not know that they're falling down 
and they don't realize the effect that it has not only internally to their own company, but also then to their customers. Gotcha. And so that is what I have, I, I try not to escalate when I don't need to, but I'm finding it now to be the more norm as we are quote unquote coming out of the pandemic than when we were deep in the pandemic. And I don't like blaming things on the pandemic, by the way. Yeah, I mean, that's, that to me shows, right, your, this idea of like accountability, right? That how a lot of times the only way that this can function in terms of us getting ahead of it or also addressing it, whatever we're experiencing is going to be through taking responsibility and accountability. If, if we are in a space where we are not doing that and sort of blaming everybody else, that is a very, that's that idea of leadership by choice or leadership by default, which means that you're at the effect of really everything. And again, not much can happen when you are operating from that, that space or that sort of level of consciousness, we'll call it. Um, all right, everyone lift the chat up. So I really appreciate, appreciate that. Like there's so many, like too many unclear project goals, frustration, broken processes. I mean, there's, it's, thank you again for, for outlining this. And again, this is for you um, as well. So keep, keep these lists. And we are now going to get into more of a little bit of what I would call the prioritization part of this, which is the list that you just created which ones, if they were addressed, if addressed, would have the biggest impact on your ability to lead more effectively now? And I say now because some of these, right, it, it, there might be more urgency around some of them, which is the idea. So take, that, take the list that you came up with that we just did, and now I would love for you to, to figure out and start to answer for yourself which ones, if they were addressed, would have the biggest impact on your ability to lead more effectively now. We're gonna take a couple of minutes. Anyone wanna come forward as well? If you talk it through, if you'd like, if it's easier for you. Um, so there was someone in the chat that said if they had processes and backups to what they do, that they wouldn't feel as burnt out. And that speaks to me big time. Um, being a startup business, you tend to go in alone and it's a lot easier to do it with a team. So it's how do we create those processes and backups when we financially are not ready to scale too much farther beyond ourselves? Thank you, Sarah. That was Sarah, right? Yeah. Or I think I may have got that wrong, sorry. Um, anyone wanna come forward? Cause we're gonna, we have one additional question really after this, which is where the, the kind of the gold nuggets hopefully for you can be found. And we're gonna really have to spend some time talking through it. So um, anyone wanna come forward and just share what would be the, what is that one when you, if you ranked it number one, what is that one thing that would give you, that would have the biggest impact on your ability to lead right now more effectively? Anyone? Okay. Gonna oh, ask sorry. One more thing. Yeah. I, I couldn't, I couldn't meet myself. This is Alexandria. I think for me, um, one thing that would be the most helpful and effective right away would just be having the uh, support of the director. I'm a project coordinator. And so the more tasks that get, you know, laid on me and then the ability to just have the support so that I can carry out my job. It's just creating a lot of chaos, which is just increasingly uh, becoming more frustrating by the day. It, I'm watching morale of the team just plummet and she's clueless or doesn't care. I'm not really sure which, <laughs> but for me in that space, in that profession right now, it would be the most effective for me. And it would just cover everything that is okay. really you know going on, so. 
I'm gonna, yeah. and I'm going to ask you a big, bold question. Uh -huh. Alexandria, what have you done to help her understand that that's what you need? I've uh, tried communicating on several occasions about my concerns to her, but they go unheard. I mean, really, there's no action. There's really like, there's no, like you did, like you re literally didn't just hear what I said. So for me, I, I'm realizing very, it's coming to be very clear that I need to be able to, I'm gonna start transitioning my way out of that organization because it is not healthy for me. It's not a healthy environment for, for many, I've got people ready to quit like today. So, and then that's bringing me to this other place of just taking, taking the time and the space I need to figure out my exit plan so that I can go forth and, and really begin to take everything that I have and the skills and the talents and what I've done for her organization to do it for my own. Okay. So it sounds like so. you have sort of come to that conclusion for yourself. Um, yeah. If that perhaps you're better served somewhere else and, and not within the current organization that you're a part of. Yes, because I've had to, I really, you know, invested so much in this new project. Um, and I just realized like, you know, you've just given so much and it's just, it's, there's no benefit to me to continue to do that. It's affecting my health, my relationships, I mean, my mental and my peace. And so I had to really sit back like, you know, this is not really working for you anymore. So make some changes that are good for you because, you know, we all know that life is short. And if I don't take care of myself, nobody will do it. Nobody can. So it's, it's taking some hard, some hard decisions, okay. but necessary ones. I, and I commend you, you know, for being able to make those decisions for yourself and not, and not stay in maybe that space of just feeling stuck, right? Or um, because that will just keep prolonging the experience that you're having. So, and it's mm -hmm. not easy um, either. So I just want to commend you on that. Um, Thank you. I, one of the things that I'm seeing, and, and this might be, again, you're giving me some ideas for future, is that I've hear of so many of you talking about, you know, like working with problem employees or this, you know, kind of working with maybe different personality types, but again, first starting with ourselves and understanding who we are um, and what are those things that tend to trigger us? Because um, we all get triggered too. I, I'm not, you know, naming anyone on an individual basis here, but how, again, we can allow our emotions to take us quickly to a place where we typically react versus understanding how to build that emotional muscle, if you will, or around control and awareness so that we don't get taken to those places. Um, because it's usually our thoughts that take us there. And that, again, is giving me the idea that there might be a build on this where we can really get into the nuts and bolts of what are those tools that will help in that, that particular area. But um, so thank you again for sharing. And now this is the big question. This is, this is the question where it's gonna take some courage and you all are courageous. You all lead organizations. You've all, you've all made it this far in the pandemic. Um, and, and there's a reason why. And I would ask that hopefully you have taken some time to stop and think about and celebrate yourself in terms of the traits, characteristics, skills, and behaviors that have allowed you to even get to where you are today. So I, that's one piece. But this next piece, next piece you're going to have to be courageous because we're going to talk about what's your plan. So those items that you prioritized, um, those items from the previous one that you said, wow, these would have the biggest impact on my ability to lead more effectively. This is where if you want to spend like five minutes really clearly outlining, I'm telling you this will make a difference. It's the only way it will make a difference in your organization and within yourself is by outlining for yourself what are the actions, conversations, and or steps that you would need to take in order to resolve those top two or three items. And maybe it's not resolve. You could replace the word with address because I recognize that some things there might be more longer term in terms of resolution. And think of this in terms of baby steps. I don't want you to, you don't get overwhelmed by, well, if I just implemented a new process, what would it look like if you actually, actually just started outlining what was 
the process. So you can think more on like micro, what I'm calling like micro steps, because sometimes we get really caught up in thinking of the whole, like it needs to get fixed. And we just get like attached to what that big thing is. Think about it in micro steps too, in terms of what actions, conversations, and steps do you need to take in order to resolve those top two or three items that you outlined? Give it like 30 more seconds. But again, if you drop it in the chat and I would love for people to come forward and share maybe one or two people. This is, this is bold. Like this is where it may require a conversation that in your mind, you might be thinking, oh my God, it's gonna be conflict. Like there's gonna be conflict or, you know, but what, what would be something that might be reasonable and feasible in terms of the actions, conversations, and steps that you would need to take in order to resolve or, or at least move forward the things that are creating that tension and stress? Anybody want to come forward and share? I'm happy to share, Kevin. Um, Thank hi, you. everyone. It's Graciela from Care Mystery Project. You know, I work in a pretty comfortable environment if I'm sharing, you know, about this. Um, so I am a, a full-time worker, a full-time employee, as well as a full-time student. So there's a lot on my plate a lot of the time. Um, and I think that I, I used to have a lot of issues in terms of trying to handle everything, working virtual. Also, as well, this is my first, you know, professional job and also to working virtual right so everything that I you know learning has been virtual so I think being in that professional space was very difficult for me to to navigate in terms of you know being a student and then transitioning as a professional but I think one of the 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 actions and steps that really did help and I'm thinking more of and this was all solved you know um, we had instead of a a six month, you know, like a, a, a traditional review, right, where we talk about what we did wrong versus what we did right. It was more of a conversation of like, how do you feel like you're doing? How can we support you? How mm. it was a really, it was a really great conversation, you know, with me, hi, and Steven, as you all know. And I think having that and having it framed as a conversation of how can we support you really did resolve some of my two two to three items where for me it was like I still live with, at home with my with my parents so traditionally if COVID didn't happen you know I would be out in my apartment out on my own but right now with COVID and housing struggles it's really difficult to even find an apartment where I could live comfortably in terms of that so you know, having that conversation with my higher ups of, you know, it's taking me a little bit longer to transition, you mm -hmm. know, what normally would take someone, you know, three to four months has taken me a little bit longer, you know, but I think that conversation initially of just being as real as possible, but it's also to I've built that trust with them, where I don't feel like they'll judge me that retaliation, I feel very privileged and blessed, because I know I'm hearing from the conversations that many folks are having and I feel like that's that's not something that many folks have so I feel very special right now to even have that but um but prior to that I did have a uncomfortable you know like an unhealthy workspace and when I was searching for that new new place that was one of my my one of the things I really needed was a healthy place and so I think if for me personally if it's not a healthy place, I can't work. I can't work there. You know, it's a, it's a search, you know, but maybe that can be an action for someone. And that's also to a privilege to for someone to to look somewhere else to work, you know, because I know a lot of us, you know, we're stuck or we have our own startups, ventures, you know, and um, I hope other folks talk about uh, about this and, you know, um, speak up. So I'm going to open so the room. Thank you so much, Graciela, for or really funny, I hear what I'm hearing you say is you really are honoring your values, 
um, and your values are to be at a place that does value this, like values what people are feeling and what they're experiencing. And really um, don't just, just again, ask just to ask, but are asking to listen. And even more importantly, asking to even take action. Um, and, and that's where, again, there's real power. Um, power empowerment only really happens through action. So this, in this particular exercise, this is meant to be a roadmap for you to start to understand. And I, and I would challenge each of you, my challenge today is to say, what, what, what those things that you've outlined, the actions or conversations, et cetera, that you need to take, it's to actually try to step forward into those and, and do it. And, and the reason, again, I say that is it's only through doing it that A, you're gonna learn about yourself. Um, that's, that's half the, sometimes we get caught up in just the outcome, but there's a lot to be gained as leaders in just trying and putting ourselves out there in that space to learn and grow and trying, regardless of what the outcome is. That's, that, that is my kind of where I come from. And a lot of, I work with so many, again, professionals in this space where we're such a performance driven culture too. Everything is about outcomes. Everything's about results. Um, and, and we miss sometimes that there's so much to be gained in the process on a very individual level. So I would challenge you, um, each of you, to, to take what you've identified. And if anyone wants to come forward, because I know someone, I think Annie, you had put delegating and letting go and just, what is, when I, I'd love to understand, like, what might be something that you can start to let go of this coming, in this coming week? You know, I've started it, um, and, but I'm still struggling with it, and I'm trying to be my best, is um, empowering my team. It's a small team, but very, um, Compact, very passionate team, which is good, but also can have, that's where it affects my ego a little bit, you know, allowing them to blossom and grow and, and, and not always agree. And then so I, sometimes I have to um, guide, um, but you don't want to stifle, right? You want to empower. And so I am saying, you know, to another one of my management team, I'm saying, you go, you meet, you explore with the team and then come back to me. And so I'm doing that right now. I just did, just doing it, and it's it's working for me, um, because I <laughs> when I'm in the meeting with everybody and it's all this, all over, it's hard for me to hide what I'm thinking. <laughs> so it's best to just remove myself from that situation, let let it go, and hope that my manager in this that's leading that for that for her de department can then bring to me what she thinks, you know, we need to discuss. And so awesome. I'm doing that right now. I had had this second meeting was yesterday. And, um, you know, and so I just, so it's stepping back, giving them a voice. Um, the next problem I'm gonna have is it's a younger team. So they might not know that when you pitch an idea, your idea doesn't always fly. So mm -hmm. I'm now I'm trying to set myself up like, how do I manage that? Um, so, and can I say one other thing real quick? Sure. I know a few steps back, we talked about COVID, how and we really can't put a lot on COVID, but I don't think it's, we can do that yet. I'm, you know, I think, you know, as I'm a school-based organization, so we watch the news. I'm, I, this could, I don't know if I can make it through another shutdown of schools mm. because we got every PPP and every credit, the uh, tax credits, I've done everything. And also I'm dealing with me and another employee as being long haulers. So that's also contributing to my, um, my fatigue, my, all those things. So I think we're still dealing with it and we have to acknowledge it and that it, it, com it compounds, I think, things. And you don't want people to know. So you just kind of walk around like that, like we talked about earlier, but there's another thing adding to the burnout, I think. For some individuals, we don't know. You know, so I just wanted Absolutely. to say that, if I may. Thank you. Um, and just also to clarify, really this exercise that we went through is about 
this, this particular part of it where we're talking about the actions that you can take, you can call them boundaries as well. Like mm -hmm. boundaries are a concept that people, you know, are very much associated with trying to get in front of burnout. So this is my version of it. Um, I'm sure many of you may have heard the word boundary. And it, they're really, it is challenging. It's not easy sometimes to, to A, be consistent. That's where sometimes they can fall apart is we just are not consistent in the things that we say that we're gonna do and that we're gonna hold ourselves accountable for in terms of you know, what we need to protect or what we, what we believe will help us remedy the things that are either A, making us tired, stressed out. And again, this exercise, you can continue to use. You could literally use this every single week as a guide where there might be more micro things that you're looking at from week to week. And you can also do it on a more macro level, like maybe stepping out for a quarter in terms of planning. You know, like at an organizational level, what would be those things that you would need to, what actions, processes, whatever, that we would need to take in order to improve, right, areas of the organization? And, and again, have a plan for it, to, but implement. So I want to, I also want to make sure that you're seeing that it's not, we're, we're talking about ourselves first, which is where it all starts, but this can be kind of taken out to a higher level as well at a more organizational level to understand, well, what are the things as an organization that we can do to help better manage burnout with our employees, right? There are small things that you can do. Um, and if everyone's holding hands, that's where, again, it falls apart. If everyone's holding themselves accountable to what the organization is saying that we are going to do, it, you know, there, you, there's incremental improvements. And again, that's how, honestly, real change happens. It kind of happens in incremental steps. You don't typically see with human behavior, huge leaps forward um, because it's not easy. Um, that's, someone talked about change management early on in the, in the chat. That it is one of the hardest things for organizations is change management because it's all about people behavior. Um, adoption, whether it's new technology, right? Things like that. So. I hope, you know, use this to your advantage and I'm going to quickly move through our last exercise because I see we have about, you know, seven minutes left and I know Brad needs at least two to three of that. So um, we're going to move quickly now. We've talked a lot about these, so I'm not going to, we're not going to spend more time, but these are those questions and I'm, I'll make sure Brad I give these to Brad, maybe as a follow-up, so we can give you, you guys can, you, all this information can be available to you. So this is another interesting way to look at things. And, and I'm not going to give it away because it builds on itself as well. And we're only going to spend about maybe 15 seconds on each one. But right now, I'd love for each of you to write down, what are all the things that you have to do today and tomorrow? And again, if you want to put it in the chat, you can, but if you have a piece of paper, you use your notes on your iPhone or your Android, you can do that as well. But what are all the things that you have to do today and tomorrow? All right, you can still, still do your list. Now, what I want you to do is either look at that same list and just think about either it can be the same list or it might be something a little bit different. What are all the things that you choose to do today or tomorrow? And again, they may be slightly different or they might be 
somewhat of the same, but when you, when you think about I choose to do it, create that list. All right, sorry if I'm moving a little quick um, just because of time, but again, I'll make sure that you have these. Now the next one is, now think about it. What are all the things that you get to do today and tomorrow? Again, this might be a little bit different or it might be very much the same, but when you think about all the things that you get to do, What's that list? All right, and then lastly, I wanna really honor time. What are all the things that you are honored to do today or tomorrow. And you can replace that word honored with blessed if that speaks to you. Or grateful to do today or tomorrow. Annie, I love that you're on video because I can kind of read your nonverbal cues, which is so good. Um, and I think you're one of the, like, you're one of the few. So I'm like paying close attention to your face, um, which is good in a good way. So just think about that experience. Think about the, the, the trail that we went through in terms of just word change. But what happened? What, what happened when you went from I have to to I choose to, to I get to, to I'm honored to or humble to or blessed to. What, what happened to you as you were going through that? And I know we are really tight on time. Um, so we're not gonna spend really a lot of time talking about it, but this, was, this whole thing was about shifting your perspective and how powerful it can be to just shift your perspective. In solving problems, in, in, in every aspect of your life, it might just be a shift in a perspective that allows you to step into less stress, higher engagement, and a, a sense of, that sense of empowerment that we, I was speaking about. And I, I know I'm going a little fast. This is just one of a power question that builds on this idea of perspective is, when you are stuck with a problem, situation, or anything, what might be another way to look at the situation that helps you to move forward? You can use this question in any circumstance, anything. And the idea is that it is an empowering question that's going to move you forward to take action versus staying stuck where you are or feeling overwhelmed. Um, and again, it could be a small thing. It just looking at things from a different perspective can be so beneficial, but we don't even sometimes really do that. We, we struggle sometimes to do that because we're so stressed out that we, we just sometimes don't have the ability to do that. So I, sorry, I'm coming to an end. I know that was quick towards the latter part. I would love to keep the conversation going. Um, hopefully this resonated with you. We talked a lot about how real of an impact this is to not only you and your organizations and the overall health and wealth. And I want nothing more than to see your organization not only you know, survive, but thrive. And so please, you can either connect with me through social media. Um, I'm also on LinkedIn, but I'm on social media at Two Steps Forward Coaching, or just text me. If you would like to further the conversation, talk a little bit more about some of the concepts that were shared and understand them better for yourself and your organization, please text me the word explore and my number is two, right there, 
361-6247. And there's my email as well. Um, so Bradley, I'm gonna stop sharing. And I'll put that in the chat while Bradley's closing it out, my um, info. Yeah, um, yeah, well, thank you, Kevin. Uh, I think it was a really amazing session. So thank you just for bringing your expertise and you know insight. Um, really right this topic is, as you know, we could tell from everybody just kind of talking or, or writing in the chat, it's just so, so needed. And really just a big thank you to you, all the, you know, everybody that attended for being so open and really, really sharing. Um, it obviously really enhanced and made this conversation better and right. This discussion wasn't even possible without you. So again, just a big thank you to You're everybody. Welcome. Yeah. Um, and we hope, you know, um, this is useful in some way for your organization and really more important, more importantly, you. Um, we'll send a follow-up email with uh, just a recording, the materials we shared and um, Kevin's information um, in case uh, any of you'd like to follow up. Um, after this call ends, you'll actually be like directly taken to a Google survey. It, it's a really quick 30 second survey. It just um, allows you to basically tell us, you know, what you think about this and maybe, you know, what ideas you have for future webinars. That way we can better serve you and your organizations. I want to take just a little quick second to talk about an opportunity for up to $10,000 in micro grants. And these are unrestricted funds for your organizations. In many cases, right, financial struggles can be a big contributor to burnout, especially if you are running, you know, a, a new business, a small, uh, uh, an organization. So financial support can maybe offset some of that. Um, so I'd like to hand it over to our external affairs officer, Graciela Moran, to kind of talk a little more about this. I see some of you have already applied, which is great, but we've actually extended the deadline, but I'll hand it over to Graciela. Thank you so much, Bradley, and thank you so much, Kevin, for you know definitely having this. This was definitely really good to reflect, even though, you know, I feel very I didn't think that burnout. In, in my case, you know, I, I'm facing burnout. I didn't even realize it. So thank you so much. Um, but this is a really good opportunity for all of y'all that are startups, ventures, um, and specifically those who haven't um, filled out their paperwork or like their documents after 2019. Um, this, this grant, this micro grant is only for startups, ventures, um, those who consider nonprofits, sole proprietors, profit, for profits. I know it's a big um, mouthful. Um, but after 2019. So I just want to go ahead and state that because I know that um, a couple of folks um, are have incorporated before 2019. Um, but these grants are brought to you um, by California Office of Small Business Advocates. We were selected as part of one of the 17 centers um, to provide these micro um, grants for you all. So they would be up to $10,000. As Bradley said, unrestricted fees. You can kind of, you can do whatever you, you want with them to build on your organization. There are a, um, a couple um, eligibility requirements on those. One of them was that um, you are um, a venture after 2019. If you haven't filed any paperwork as of today, um, you are you you do qualify for this. Again, they are for ventures, startups. Um, so it's to help you get on your feet on that. Um, we do really encourage you to apply. It's a really simple um, application. We try. We tried our best to make sure that there aren't any barriers. The application, um, if there are written questions, are up to 50 words. Um, so it's really simple. Just state your mission, state your vision, and um, let us know um, um, if you have any questions. As Bradley went ahead and put that in there. Um, our application was um, um, for today, but it has been extended to tomorrow at 7 p.m. PST. Um, so please feel free to, you know, send us an email if you have any questions. I'm happy to jump on a call um, and, and chat with you all if you have any um, questions that it doesn't make sense. Um, we do have a couple webinars um, on our website that you can um, take a look at where we do answer a couple of those questions. If you are in Riverside County, we do have another fund that we're partnering up with Riverside County Action Partnership where, the, where they will um, have a thousand dollars that are extra added to those to those funds um so keep a look at that um here's my email so please feel free to um, send me an email as well as just take a little go take a look at our website um, our website has all the requirements all the eligibility and anything that you have any questions with 
Um, and so that's about it. And I'll pass it over to Bradley to wrap up. And Kevin, if you want to say anything else, you're more than welcome to. But thank you all again for coming to our monthly webinar. And we look forward to seeing you next month at our next one. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody. We hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Happy Friday. And we'll send a follow up email soon if there's anything we can do. Um, just always feel free to reach out um, to us. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone, for being here and just showing up. It was great.